Good afternoon and welcome back to MEFC Realist TV and Mick Ruby here again. Sorry for this little bit late video upload on this day of recording 30th. I had to attend a family funeral this afternoon, heavily draining as this was a very close friend of our family. But anyway, the transfer news and the takeover news doesn't stop uh, and hence why I'm here to give you a little bit the latest update regarding Andrew Onana and also the sales takeover with Sheikh Yassim 92 Holding Foundation. Stick around, take a zip on your coffee and see you in 10 seconds. <laughs> Right then, a little bit of a mini breaking news that talks are very advanced between Manchester United and Inter Milan regarding the goalkeeper Andrew Onana. David De Gea's contract is about to expire midnight tonight. Ten Hag is really, really pushing to get this over the line. Hence what you've seen in the past being reported as well that the sporting directors and Manchester United has been having direct conversations. Apparently there are in Ibiza trying to strike a deal. Manchester United is supposed to make the first and, first and final offer, which is led to believe to be around 45 million euros plus five add-ons, according to very credible sources coming also from Italy, uh, which is Di Marzio, then also tweeted and correlated with Fabrizio Romano and myself also checking with the agency intermediates camp as well. So this is hot from the press. Uh, and it's led to believe also that this is a Eric Ten Hag push. Eric Ten Hag wants this done and dusted as soon as possible. So we will see if there will be a formal bid coming in later on tonight. If it does, we will report this later on. But this seems to be most likely very, very hot on the press, according to my opinion. From a harder meter, I would almost give it a 75%. But we will see. We got Manchester Mount over the line. Now, will Onana be the number two coming in? And barring that the international transfer window is opening tomorrow, God, we are on a fast train now. Oh, buckle up anyway. So, yeah, that's a good one. That's a really, really good one. Regarding um, Mason Mount, there's a lot of people that's uh, in the fan base that are saying, well, well, hang on a second, we're paying him 200 base and 100 million add-ons, whatever. No, I think that's fair enough. You know, Mason Mount is a Champions League winning player. He's an international playing for England. You know what? We are not the KPI holders or budgeters or accountants of Manchester United, you know, at the end of the day. If Eric Ten Hag sees something really good in Mason Mount, if the they've negotiated the price we would just have to wait and see you know no point of throwing the toys out of the prams so mason mount is officially a manchester united player i really didn't think that this day would come i really truly believed that he would stay at chelsea i believed that he loved chelsea i believed him when he spoke about his affection for the club the fact that he's been there since he was six years old i thought would play a significant impact on his decision making process but it hasn't mason mount has gone to Manchester United. He has opted to leave Chelsea to go and play for Manchester United. Now look, I've backed Mason Mount, haven't I? I've been incredibly supportive. I've pledged nothing but unilateral, aggressive support to Mason Mount. I think he's a lovely little player. I think he's one of the best players at Chelsea. I think he drastically improves our midfield and I think that we can't really replace him. I think what he does, particularly off the ball, is so valuable. So yes, we're going to be weaker without him. And yes, we are strengthening a rival. Manchester United have got a fantastic player on their hands at a bargain price. So all of those things considered, I can honestly say that I'm gutted. I can honestly say that I wish he'd stayed. I can honestly say that I'm genuinely hurt. I can honestly say that I think this is a sad day for the club. But I can also honestly say, sod him. Sod Mason, man. If he does want to play for Chelsea, fine. If he wants to go elsewhere, if he doesn't really love the club, if he doesn't think that... Chelsea belong in his life. We've had far better players than him leave the club, and we've got far stronger without him. So sod him. And in matter of fact, when you when you listen to Chelsea uh, uh, fans complaining and having salty tears and raving about Mason Mount, and then they don't wish him any well at Manchester United, tells you that we actually got a really good player on our hand. Now, if we're sticking on the Mason Mount story, I find it very ironical how the 
British Press and Manchester Evening News and Samuel Locus and Central Devils are now trying to bigen up John Murtaugh that's been under heavy scrutiny to say that he was the hero of this masterclass deal, that he didn't buckle up to the pressure. We didn't overpay, but hang on a second. We actually did overpay, to be honest, because initially you wanted to offer 50 plus 5 add-ons. We ended up getting 60, and that was the price that Chelsea always wanted. So they met in the middle. I don't think it's a Murtaugh masterclass. It's, you know, where is the new Matt Hargreaves that was the chief negotiator? You know, <laughs> at the end of the day, Murtaugh is not the one that negotiating the deal. It is actually the negotiating director, Matt Hargreaves, that replaced Matt Judge. Why is that not mentioned? No, but they, I really have to big up John Murtaugh. So big on that. You know, Credits when credit's due, we got the player that Eric Ten Hag wanted over the line, move to the next target. Speaking of the next target, we automatically have to transition over to the t latest takeover news. And you that have been following me, I always call a spade a spade, applying logic and reasoning. And, you know, I've been giving you the facts and figures to what's going on with the takeover, and especially when it comes to Sheikh Yassim and 9-2 holding foundation. So all roads leads to Doha. This is what I've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks. But, you know, you got to look at the slow sports news, slow sports news, including the British media that's been playing a blinder in this one. They've been mistreating the gravy train, basically. So what does this mean, Mick? Well, basically, today, everyone is backtracking now that they found out that Sheikh Yassim 92 Holding Foundation is the winning bid of Manchester United PLC. Just look at that their tweet coming in from The Athletic and articles coming in from The Athletic as well, for basically saying that the Qataris are preparing a transactional documents, including shareholders agreements, so that the takeover can go through immediately. Immediately. But yet, they are to hear back. So, what are they saying here? Let me explain in layman's term what this means. So basically, you that have been followed this podcast and MUSC Realist TV knows that we apply logic and reasoning. We follow the money trails. We speak to sources close within 92 Holding Foundation. So when the press starts talking about this, we react as well. You know, when 92 Foundations are preparing transactions paperwork, anyway, this is kind of a little bit part of the delay, according to my understanding and what I've been hearing as well, because there's a leg legality and paperwork checkpoint that is kind of called financial transactions, right? That is 100%, 100%, because this is a billion dollar transactional deal. From what I've been understood and from what I've been informed as well, in this situation, 92 Holdings has to make about approximately three transactions. First one, is to clear the creditors, meaning all the bonds, every debt that they owned before even getting the keys to Manchester United. Number two, to get the key keys to Old Trafford and Manchester United is to pay off the Class B Glazers, the 69% shares, to have a full ownership or the majority of the ownership. That is one transaction that might be over to 38 bucks per you know, share by Glazer family. And that's way too much what the bastards ever got us for. You know what I mean? They got us for free. But anyway, it's all about moving forward from here. Number three, and this is the sticky point, right? This might take a little bit longer time, you know, because you have to acquire one transaction for the remaining of the 31% A shares, which is the retail shares. This is what everyone is looking at the New York Stock Exchange. This is where it's going to be a halt. This is where you going to be decided what they're going to be decided what will be the premium buyout let's say it might be 30 bucks per share for the retail holders once that's f finished it's 100 percent shake your seams but that doesn't mean that shake your seam and night two holding foundation can take over as long as they acquire the glazer shareholders number two and number one pay off the debitors so that's pretty much where it is and that's a little bit of a reason why it's taking time but rest assured they have the right team working on it they have bankers they have lawyers they have advisors so it shouldn't be taken that long time to be honest to be fair but they're always a big but where's the elephant in the room mick hang on a second well how can then Manchester United be sold and how can then Sheikh Yassim come on board 
ASAP. It doesn't work like that, right? So as long as you then follow step one transaction, step two transaction, then you are the legal owner of Manchester United PLC because you clear the debt, you clear that you paid off the creditors, you bought up the Glazer 69% and the remaining can take a little bit longer time to delist things on the New York Stock Exchange, which is the, you know, transaction number three. So don't panic. It's just the way it is. This is business. And don't forget that 92 Holding Foundation and Sheikh Yassim are acquiring 100% of Manchester United. And also, we finally get the glazes out. Just to round off this recording, I want to add on an extra spice or extra fuel to the fire already. That's been created by British media. You're in the mud. You shot yourself in the foot. You shot yourself in the kneecaps by creating phantom stories. Remember this one? They were questioning about Sheikh Yassim's identity. Does he really exist? Nobody's seen him. You know, all that stuff. You remember that that was rumbling around across different articles. Well, look at this right now. This tells you that they are backtracking. The Athletic did a piece just to give you the picture who Sheikh Yassim is. Oh, he likes expensive things. If you read through it, it's a good article. You have to pay for it, though. <laughs> That's all I, it is. <laughs> but, you know, it, all I want to say is happy days. You know, I am extremely excited that, you know, I'm just waiting like you. I'm in the gray zone. Nobody knows when this is going to be announced. It's kind of a little bit of a secrecy. We just have to wait and see. This has been Mick Ruby from MUC Realist TV. I really hope you like this content and video, but please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button so you never miss any live podcast or a video or anything like that. This is me having my say, and hopefully I will give you back the day. Ciao. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MUFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.